Howdy YouTube, Unky Joe here, Unky Joe's Playhouse. Today, another component for our upcoming uh, rack assembly and rack installation video. Uh, we are uh, we are building another unit, uh, rack mounted server, to go into the rack. I think I've said rack enough times. Anyway, as you know, when we retired that Exponology NAS, we had a uh, motherboard left over, an i3 with a gig of RAM. And uh, I got to thinking to myself, I have always wanted to build a physical PFSense box. So uh, that unit, that motherboard has two onboard uh, NIC cards. It has a gig of RAM, it's an i3 processor. So I went ahead and pulled the trigger and got a 2U case, a Rosewell case. And uh, I have uh, uh, I want to show you the unboxing of it, what it looks like internally, and then I want to show you what I ended up doing with it. And this is all part and parcel of uh, the last video we did on moving things around. I think it was video number 188, where I showed you I converted my domain controller and put that into a 4U case. Now, it's probably overkill for what that unit does, but I'm talking about future growth down the road and some plans I have. So, that's why I got the 4U unit. Uh, and then, as you also know, we are getting ready to pull the trigger and purchase a 25U uh, rack unit, four-post rack, uh, that has casters with it. Uh, pull the trigger on that rack and get it in here because I want to put everything I own in a rack mount unit, in a rack mount case, and put it all on my rack. And I want to be able to move that rack in and out of that server room if I need to clean or do some construction in there, whatever it is I need to do. I want to be able to move that rack out of the way. Uh, with a with a minor problem of disconnecting it so there's going to be a lot of pieces to that video but uh, i'll try to catch as many as i can but uh, today uh, let's get on with the video where i, I show you the build of my pf sense box uh, and uh, what that case looks like Okay, so you didn't necessarily see me build this, but you did see me unbox it, and uh, you've seen me build machines before, and uh, this uh, motherboard that's in here is the H97N-Wi-Fi that used to be my Xmenology NAS, and uh, you know what I ended up doing with the drives in there? We put them in to that 2016 server on the Dell R710 with drive vendor, yada yada. So go check those videos. So what I want to do is get all of my, I'm tired of having uh, many uh, mid-tower PCs sitting around. Uh, I've had these cases 10, 11 years old, these Antec cases, because they're just so flexible, easy to use. But my new paradigm is I want to get everything into a rack unit that is mobile and that is as small as a footprint as I can get it to keep all my equipment in one place. And uh, uh, with y'all's generous donations, I want to thank everybody that's donated to the Rack Fund. Uh, we've almost got enough now to purchase that rack, so it'll be coming here soon. But I digress. What I w really want to cover today, though, is what I ended up doing with that H97N Wi-Fi motherboard. And I put it into this 2U Rosewill uh, rack mount case. And as you can see, it's not a very deep case, but I was able to take the power supply out of the uh, out of the old Xmenology, the motherboard, and then I've got a, a two and a half inch spinning hard drive in this unit. And uh, I was able to cram all those components 
into this 2U case, so I'll take you along with me here. Pardon my horrible camera work. But uh, here we go, here's the final build. So I've taken the power supply that was out of there. It's, a, it's way overkill. You can see it just fits in there. Uh, but it's a standard ATX power supply. Uh, it's 650 watts. I won't need anywhere near that. But the beauty of a large power supply is it'll also... Uh, it's not going to be efficient at lower power consumption, but it'll be fine for what I need to. And then there's the H97N Wi-Fi board. The only thing I don't have in here is the Wi-Fi card. I don't use it, so I took it out. It's got two 4 gig sticks of RAM for 8 gig of RAM. And then I have a spinning 2.5 inch hard drive in here that's out of an old... I think it's out of an old Toshiba laptop, or it's out of a, it's out of my uh, Mac Mini, or, or yeah, my Mac Mini over there. One of the two. Real simple setup. Now, the two NICs that are on here, one of these NICs is a Realtek, the other one is an Intel, but it's the Intel 217 series, and I didn't know how well this was supported under PFSense, and even though PFSense sees both network cards. I didn't want to take the chance on them not working, so I went out and purchased a, this is a Dell or Intel uh, four port gigabit NIC card. And um, it works great. I've already used it in there. I've already set up PFSense and done some work on it. As you probably kind of figured, this is my PFSense router. <laughs> One problem though, I forgot to take into account that this is a full height card and a full height card is not going to fit into this case as you can see the the riser the uh, the card is too high so I've I've had to order a new bracket for this card uh, I'm just showing it to you now and I uh, it's kinda hard to find a bracket for these Intel uh, uh, Dell slash Intel cards I I was real careful to make sure I entered the model number in there of the card that I have uh, in order to find uh, the right bracket. I did. I found it. it's in California. Uh, the cheapest one I found was five bucks. There was another one in there that was sixteen dollars. But uh, I thought while I'm waiting to get that bracket in, I'll just go ahead and use the two onboard NIC cards. Now I've al already installed and configured my PFSense and I'm not going to do, a, this is not what this video is about. This video is about the hardware in here and whether I got this up, to, up and running or not. So that's what this video is about. But I'm going to try and use that Realtek and that Intel network card until my bracket comes in and until I'm willing to pull it back out of the rack, open it back up, and put everything back, uh, put the new NIC, or the uh, four port NIC card in there. Ultimately, I may end up doing that. I don't know yet. I haven't decided. But if I can get the Realtek and the Intel to work without problems, I'm not going to worry about it. Uh, putting that Intel NIC in, or that Dell NIC in here, I, I can put it into another server and get good use out of it. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and uh, boot this up. And uh, I'm going to uh, make sure it runs, it boots. Um, I may have an issue with this hard drive. I'm just going to power it on. A, I turn the power on to the back. I may have an issue with this hard drive. I'm not quite sure yet because I may have, when I mounted it, distorted the drive a little bit. And, uh, but there it is spinning up. <laughs> the beauty of this power supply is, is that on the cover, there is, uh, I was like, oh shoot, a power supply is not gonna work in there, but it does. As you can see on the cover, the whole line's upright with the power supply fan, so we're good on there. Um, it's booting into BSD now. And what I need to do now that the network is calm because everybody's gone to bed is I need to uh, reconfigure my uh, my PF sense as you can see it's booting there but I need to reconfigure it for these two new network cards well new to it I had them turned off in the BIOS uh, so I need to get in uh, log into that IP address and reconfigure uh, go through my firewall reconfiguration make sure I've got everything right now once I get all this hardware up and running, and I'm a little bit more familiar with PFSense because I'm still not comfortable with it, I'm about 90% there. Uh, and I'll, in my PFSense video, I'll explain why I'm using PFSense uh, instead of all Unify products, like I have that Unify gateway up there. And I'm explaining to you why I'm moving over to PFSense as my 
as my firewall and the firewall for my clients and my reasoning behind it. So there it is. It's booting up. The system is assembled. It's a uh, Rosewill uh, 2U case. And uh, I'm very happy with this case. It's uh, It's got about one, two, three, four internal three and a half inch drive bays. And it's got a couple of uh, external five and a quarter uh, five and a half inch bay yeah five and a quarter or five and a half inch bays so I'm very happy with the purchase it was only I think it was 69 bucks for this case but uh, I think it was well worth the money uh, you can see the it's got LED on the front for a hard drive and for and for power and then it has two USB ports and then it has a reset button and power button it also has a LAN indicator, but my board doesn't have the LAN indicator light that I'm aware of. I'm still looking into that because that would be neat if I could get the uh, one of the network cards to light up and let me know when there was activity. It's just something I like, personal preference. So I'm going to end this part of the video right here because my battery is running out. The motherboard that came out of that uh, uh, Xmenology NAS, I was doing nothing with. And uh, I've been wanting to build a PFSense router for quite some time. An actual physical router, not a virtual one. And there are many reasons for that. But I'm not going to cover those in this video. Uh, but I, physically I wanted to get a PFSense box built to put on my network. And so that's what I'm doing with this uh, 2U box. And uh, you probably notice there's a lot more noise now in the video. <clears throat> I've been asked by several subscribers to turn off the noise filtering uh, they say it's distracting so I'm going to turn it off and if I don't have any complaints in the next couple of videos we'll just leave it off uh, if you guys don't mind the background noise I don't mind it at all usually I try to cover it up with a little bit of music in the background or something but uh, but uh, that it clips the audio a little too harshly so I could probably adjust it but it's easier to, we'll just turn it off you guys let me know down in the comment sections uh, whether you like that idea or not. Alrighty, so there you go. Uh, so far so good. It's up and running. Uh, I I had previously configured PFSense in that beige box with that uh, Intel uh, quad uh, port NIC card that I showed you that I ended up not putting in the new P or into the PFSense box because I'd heard bad things about Realtek and, uh, controllers. And uh, but yeah, I've never had any major. I've had some driver issues with Realtek network cards, but the one I have and the Intel, the onboard uh, card I have, or NICs that I have, is natively supported uh, by the operating system. So and by PFSense. So if PFSense has drivers for him and says it'll work, I'm going to give it a try. We'll see what kind of kind of outcome I have. Uh, and if I'm not happy with the results, or if I need those two additional network ports, then uh, once that uh, low uh, that riser uh, adapter comes in to make that a low-profile card, I'll pop it in there. So you know, it, it was trivial taking that thing out and reconfiguring it with the two internal NICs, and they're working fine. I mean, that's how I'm able to upload this video to you today. Uh, the other thing I wanted to mention was that uh, I'm going to attempt to edit this video with Kaden Live. KDEN live because I'm tired, frankly, of of paying uh, Adobe for the uh, privilege of using their software. Adobe Premiere is a fantastic piece of software, but it is really overkill for my limited uh, technical produ video production needs. Uh, so I want to find something free or open source that will do what I need to do. You know, basic video editing, transitions, audio editing. Uh, maybe some green screen, that kind of thing in the future. Nothing too fancy. So uh, hopefully if I was successful, I've edited this entire video with Caden Live. Uh, and I'm going to try some of the other uh, video editing programs as well because my contract with Adobe will be up in October. So I need to plan for the future. And frankly, that's 20 to $25 a month I could use somewhere else. But I'm going on about it. Anyway, we hope you found the video entertaining and informative. As always, please give, give us a thumbs up down below if you liked it. I love seeing your comments down in the comments section. Or if you have some questions, uh, email me, unkyjoesplayhouse at gmail.com. And we're also uh, working on the Unky Joe's Playhouse website and forum. Yes, we're going to have a forum. 
and uh, I'll be making an announcement on that uh, coming up in the future. Donate if you're so inclined. We take PayPal and Patreon. And please don't forget, we plan to see you on the other side.